Hello there, my fishy friends. My name is Peter, and today I am on the Fraser River in Chilliwack, British Columbia. I'm here to fish for sockeye salmon, and um, it really is a very beautiful place. I gotta say, every time I come out here, I'm amazed by how vast this river is. It doesn't even seem real. It's it's just it's so huge. It's convoluted here in the heart of the Fraser, so many sandbars and side channels. I, I love coming here, even though the fishing itself tends to be kind of on the boring side. First day of our 10 day opening, and I promised some people that I would do a quick little tutorial on how to go after these. Really, it's not rocket science. It's uh, long leader bottom bouncing, and the aim is to floss the fish. So as it's swimming upstream, opening its mouth, all you're trying to do is to get your leader through the through the mouth and then the hook gets them in the side of the mouth. It's a controversial fishery. A lot of people hate that flossing is legal, but it is legal in BC. Um, the, the real problem with flossing is when you try and floss holding fish, so fish that are stacked up in a pool, you get an awful lot of foul hooked fish, which really is no good. But when you're flossing traveling fish like this, well, I mean, last time in 2018 when we fished for these, I got 18 sockeye and one of them was foul hooked. And so I guess that was number 19, I released it. So actually those ratios are probably better than most people do just fishing the vetter with a, a short leader and a short float. So, you know, go figure. Uh, but uh, yeah, definitely if you take this kind of fishing to the vetter and you try and do it for Chinook and whatnot, you're going to end up with 20 foul hooked fish for every one that is flossed through the mouth so it's not an appropriate fishery on a small tributary but here on the Fraser it works it's productive but today I'm gonna to pan around because it really is very beautiful out here it's um, today there just aren't a lot of fish around and that's the thing with this fishery it's very hit and miss sometimes you come out and you can limit out in literally in five casts you hit a school of fish you catch two your buddy catches two and you go home other times you're fishing for like five hours straight and nothing and that was kind of the case today i felt one fish on very briefly i've only seen one jump the whole time i've been here and nobody else has caught anything so that's the way it goes okay let's go into the gear and um, i'll show you what i use so really this is a very minimalist sort of fishery this is all i brought to the river I got a few pre-tied leaders. So this is about a 10 foot leader, a 25 pound monofilament. It's got a barbless hook on the end and a corky. And usually what I use is a corky and a little bit of wool. So um, these are all taped up. I'll show you the one on my, on my hook here. So what you have there is a corky that gives it a little bit of flotation. Ideally, that's pegged about an inch above the hook. Mine are kind of sliding around and find any toothpicks. So the, the wool gives it a little bit of drag, which straightens out your leader. And the corky gives it a little bit of flotation, keeps your hook off the bottom so you don't keep snagging up and losing gear. So yeah, about a 10 foot leader. And then it goes to... Uh, my kayak, so my bouncing Betty, and a leader saver. So let me show you the leader savers. Hey, there are a bunch of different leader savers you can get. These are the kind of the simplest ones. It's a piece of wire. So your main line attaches to this point right here up top. Your bouncing Betty attaches to the short leg, and your leader attaches to this long leg. And what that does is your bouncing Betty is, is kind of it's, it's going along the bottom, bouncing along, and your leader goes out sideways. So that's it. And then the bouncing beddies themselves. Oh, let me show you a couple other styles of leader saver. So this is kind of the same rig. Let me see. I have one with a bouncing betty hooked up. So this is the kind of the same rig. Your main line goes on the short end, then your betty, and your leader goes off the long end. And same thing, it's just a spreader bar, keeps your leader from getting damaged. Hence the name Leader Saver. Very simple. And then what I bring to the river is an assortment of beddies. So I start with maybe like little baby three quarter ounce once, one ounce, two ounce, three ounce. And what you do is you try and size your beddy for the speed of current. So the slower the current, the smaller your bouncing beddy should be. 
so that it's just kind of ticking over the top of the rocks. So if your Betty is too big, it'll just get stuck in behind every rock. If it's too little, it won't even touch bottom. So you have to find kind of a happy medium there and find one that's just kind of skipping off the tops of the rocks. My weapon of choice is a level wind reel or a bait casting reel, whatever you want to call it. You can absolutely do this with a regular spinning reel, as long as it's a fairly large one and gives you a little bit of distance. The Fraser is a big river, so you know sometimes the fish are quite close to shore. Sometimes they're 20 feet from shore, sometimes they're 200 feet from shore. You want to try and bring a reel that will let you cast far so you can kind of cover all the possible situations. Important ingredient here is the braid. So you want a fairly heavy braid which cuts through the river a lot better than monofilament does. This is a very brief opening we have so I wouldn't say re-spool everything if you've got mono, fish mono, but braid is better for bottom bouncing. The cast and retrieve itself is pretty straightforward. Just remember you're casting a heavy weight and uh, you don't want to cast as hard as you can because if something goes wrong stuff's gonna break. You're gonna hurt yourself, you're gonna maybe break your fishing rod. So don't cast as hard as you possibly can. Take it easy. Uh, some of those fish are traveling up in knee-deep water. It, it really depends on the spot you're at. You want to try and find a spot that isn't too bouldery. The rocks you see here are about as big as you'd want to bottom bounce. Anything bigger than that will just eat your gear like crazy. A very common beginner mistake is to cast too far upstream. You want to cast straight out in front of you, maybe a few degrees upstream. Tighten up your line a bit and then let it do its thing. It's going to bounce and as it bounces closer and closer to shore, that leader straightens out sideways and that's how you get your flossed fish. That's about it. Um, just look for the travel lanes. When you fish, see fish jumping in a certain spot, well, target that. If you see people, other people catching them in a certain spot, target that. All the fish kind of tend to travel up the river following the same path of least resistance. And if you can figure that out, you're gonna catch lots of fish. Good luck out there and thanks for watching.